So hopefully this is going to the, the right YouTube account. Um, okay, good. Uh, I just streamed on my gaming channel and to Twit the related Twitch channel, and and now I have um, I have to like switch out all the configuration over. I need to find an easier way to do this, but as of right now, it's it's um I don't know. It's kind of a little convoluted how I do this with different all the different YouTube channels. I mean, man, I wish I could have it all one YouTube channel. I really do, but uh, game, you know, game development, playing video games, and gardening, not always the best combination. But in any case, thank you so much for everyone who is joining me today, either as it streamed live or watching this after the fact. I'm still experimenting with doing mostly live streams on this channel, maybe a, a show once a week, aiming for Sundays about noon time, and really just going over with photos and videos of what has been going on on the homestead or just the gardening growing world of mine, and just talking about what's going on, just 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 relaxing, giving updates, and, and perhaps in the future giving uh, specific tutorials. So I would love feedback on this process. I've been getting some very positive feedback about the live streams. People enjoy interacting. Um, and they generally like this format where you can see me on screen and you can see the pictures and everything else. So it's it's a little better of a setup. Today I'm going with a uh, black and white theme for myself, right? Okay, yeah, I want to make sure I had that set correctly. So anyway, so why don't we talk about what's 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 going on here? So it's it's been a weird growing season. I say this pretty much every time I'm on camera because it's super strange. So we so we had uh, we started the season with it got started to get a little warmer, then hard frost. And then it got really warm and we're like, okay, finally spring's here. Then hard frost, like hard frost the second time. Then we get back and it's like, it's like a uh, warm, 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 super hot drought, 90 degree plus, And it was like that all summer long, barely had any rain. I lost a lot of stuff. And, and I actually have some pictures of the disaster, which I talked about last time. We'll get to it. But, and, um, and now it's just like dropped off. It was like so hot. Now it's like close to freezing again. So I'm super concerned. So I I got these new trees. I got um, a very a two to three foot nectarine, a bubblegum plum, which is a good six or seven feet tall, and three cherry trees. And they look really sad. Now I'm going to talk about this rip stuff, which I'm not happy about. I am not happy with... with uh, my order this year to fastgrowingtrees.com. I have very well watched videos of me praising the company and enjoying the customer service and everything else. I can't say that this year, you know, and somebody actually commented about their order this year. They're like, how can you support this company? They're terrible. And like, historically, it's been good, but they ordered this year. I ordered this year and it's been awful. Now, was that due to the pandemic? Yeah, quite possibly. They're probably understaffed, you know, it's probably very difficult. There's a lot going on. So I got, I'm going to have to cut him some slack, but I can't let him completely off the hook because there's just some stuff that it just, it's not positive. So I'm going to talk about that more in terms of the damage. But before we get to that, let's just talk about, I am nervous because it suddenly got cold. I was betting when I bought these trees that, uh, that we were going to have late frost because it was so hot this season. But it's also been a really weird season, not surprisingly. So we may end up getting a frost on time, which our average frost is October 1st. So I got another week. And ideally, when you plant new trees in the fall, they should have six weeks to prepare themselves to, to for the roots to develop to make it through the winter. So I could lose all these trees and I would be out hundreds of dollars investment, really, which sucks. But I took the risk and I may have been on the wrong side of that bet. So... The trees are coming along. I'm making sure to water them frequently, making sure they get all the water they need. At least the temperatures during the day are reasonable. Um, they're not super cold. I mean, it's very... During the day, it is very acceptable fall weather or late summer weather. It's just the nights that have gotten really, really cold. But so this is one of the trees. I'll talk about the big rip in the bark, which I'm not thrilled about, but that's how it came. Um, and the trees look okay. So this is the bubblegum uh, plum, and it looks okay. It looks wilted, but none of the leaves have dropped. 
all the everything still seems pliable in terms of the branches so okay there's another shot of that there's a piece I'm realizing these pictures don't come in order, which kind of annoy the crud out of me. So here's another picture of, uh, it's all three, it's hard to see. I gotta really highlight these things, but these are the three cherry trees. They also have very, very limp leaves. Um, does not look particularly happy, but again, I just need the roots because the strength is in the roots. The life is in the roots. So the roots and the buds are the things you look for to know if your tree has a future. Um, the buds that are developing still seem pliable, still seem viable. And, you know, I'm praying that the roots develop enough before hard frost happens. Now, I'm worried about the hard frost, the thing that will go down and, and damage young roots or, if, or kill off this tree. You know, gentle freezes here or there might knock off the leaves, but the roots may still be able to put the, it'll probably drain a lot of energy out of the upper part of the tree but you know that just may be worthwhile and maybe have to be how it is so um i'm a little nervous about these new trees we'll see how it goes though and if i miss out i miss out so the gashes in one of the trees there's actually two of them i apparently don't have pictures of both of them but i sent you know i was gonna i didn't know if i should say something but finally i sent a message to fastgrowingtrees.com and i'm like this is unacceptable Usually the trees I've gotten from them historically have been nice and thick and big and have um, proper pruning done to the branches. It looks like somebody just took two branches and ripped them off the tree. Uh, I apparently don't have a picture up close, one of my up close pictures here. Oh, we d I do. So, so look, so not only is this rip in the bark really not cool, like you want like a small oval shape if you have damage to your tree. This is ripped down the trunk. And look at all this rough edge for the bark. That's super bad because that can just that can just accelerate opening of the wound as opposed to closing it. So I've had to go and trim off some of the stuff. But in general, this is not acceptable. So I've I've actually asked them. That's a cute puppy. I'll talk about the puppy in a bit. I um, mean, here's the other one. So the tree had two of these, which is unacceptable. So I'm not entirely happy with uh, with my order. I'm just not entirely happy with my order. Um, the, uh, the transplanted avocado trees look, uh, not avocado, excuse me, the pawpaw trees look very happy. They're not that, that's not one of them, but these look really happy. Uh, they're actually putting on, starting to put on a little bit new growth. So moving them into pots in the shade was the right move. Um, this is actually, excuse me one second. And uh, this particular tree uh, is the apricot tree that died. The craft on top died and it was regrowing from the roots. So I wanted to dig it up and save it in a pot. I didn't want to dedicate a space to it because I was like, hey, if it survives, because if it's grown from the rootstock, a rootstock is not guaranteed to be a really good, healthy. Well, it's probably going to be a healthy plant um, because that's the reason why they're chosen for rootstock because they're very healthy, vigorous. What I mean to say is probably not going to be very tasty or productive fruiting wise because that's why they usually take the the healthier varieties the, the hardier varieties use them as rootstock but gr but um graft on top of that trunk uh you know some kind of variety that is very tasty and guaranteed to be good and productive so that the graft died though so for a while there the graft was regrowing and the root i should have cut at that point i should have cut off the, the roots but I, the 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 but I didn't, so it ended up sapping, I think, sapping energy from the, the graft regrowing. So the the rootstock. But anyway, all to say, when I dug it up, it was very unhappy, and uh, it looks like the branches have died off. I'm hoping it regrows. If it doesn't, though, no big deal. Um, so I've continued. No real update to the... This is the mulberry tree that I did the air layering. I've done a few more air, la air layerings because... The one in the ground isn't looking particularly happy. I showed that last time, and I don't think I have another picture of it, unfortunately. But yeah, so I've covered in tin foil, and I've, I, have do, I do not see any roots yet. I also checked on the blackberries that I also did the same with, which I think I do have a picture of. Maybe, 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 maybe. My apologies, I gotta get better at organizing these. The, the problem is that the, the pitchers like to reorganize themselves after I've uploaded them 
or downloaded them from a computer. Well, it doesn't matter. So, <laughs> um, so it's so those. It doesn't look like there's any growth. Again, something that I'm racing against time. Those air layerings, because you know, if the cold weather hits, I'm probably not going to get um, any roots, and that's going to just damage and ruin everything. So that's also a race against time. So there's a lot causing my heart to pitter patter in this late late summer, you know, race to winter. So that's awful. The bees are doing great. Things are slowing down because the weather is getting cold. Um, so I'm probably going to be removing this umbrella very soon because they don't need the shade protection. And I'll let them go about, you know, their bee late season thing. I'm keeping an eye on them, but I did not overexpand these hives, which I talked about. One of these hives especially could have gone to a third deep box, but I decided against it because historically I've done that and I feel like I've added too much space that I then need to, when their populations decrease, which they naturally do towards winter because they get rid of the ones that aren't needed, they get rid of drones, they get rid of um, older workers and they just let older workers die off uh, and, and the queen starts producing less, starts laying less eggs. And that's part, you know, that's the idea to shrink the colony Make sure they have a, a, a skeleton crew, essentially, to get through winter to make sure they don't have to have more than they need or extras that are taking up space, taking up resources. So it's natural for the colony to shrink down numbers wise. And if you have a gigantic space, it's strategic to reduce that space. So if you had like three or four deeps boxes, you'd want to re reduce it down to two anyway, um, just so they have less surf less area that they have to heat now of course this is an apame hive which is heavily insulated heavily insulated the, the edges are like a couple inches thick but um but it's good to just i just left them there uh, they're still they're, i put they're brand new colonies too and next year probably what i'll do is if i think they need to expand i'm going to start putting honey mediums on top box medium boxes on top so honey supers um so not much to, not to talk about with the bees you know things are going good I've not been stung since, but I've also not been bothering them a lot. So right here are surprise tomatoes like um, and some eggplants. I don't think they're going to develop much, but I wanted to share it because the kids actually planted out this garden in a pot. It was originally out back where they could run and play, but I moved it because the chickens were destroying the, some of the plants. Put it in the front garden because I want to reuse this pot for myself next year. Um, cause these these 20 gallon pots are precious to me. I still need to buy nine more of them to complete my 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 garden but in any case it's doing well so i thought i'd share it's got like a cherry tomato and an eggplant that's doing kind of crazy stuff so our little puppy i keep running by these pictures she's just so cute um we're so enamored by the uh, king charles cavalier that we really 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 want to get another one and we thought we were going to get another one it turned out to be kind of a scam so we lost out on so we got all our, our hopes up for nothing but we're hoping to maybe breed her next year when she's older or something. There's a, there's a few people around that have intact males, but not the focus of this this uh, this video. But she's so cute, I couldn't help but share video pictures of her. So here's the garden, as you can see. They still look amazing. I've stopped the irrigation. I've cut that off to everything, including the bushes, because it's getting it's not as hot. The evaporation's not happening as like intensely. Um, this asparagus that I planted, I talked about it last year, is still putting on new. Sh it's putting up new shoots. This is a first year crown. I can't believe it. They've done so much better, but they've mostly lived their lives with irrigation. So that might explain it. So next year, hopefully all my asparagus will be doing just as well because I will have, exp I will have irrigation going from the start as soon as I start planting stuff. So hopefully better things to come with that. Now planting a fall garden, basically every pot that I've taken stuff out of that I've, you know, like there's corn that I'm going to be removing, there's bean plants, there's some watermelon plants that have given up the ghost for the year. Um, so I, if basically everywhere that a pot opens up, I throw in a bunch of kale seeds. So they're growing in kind of amusing bunches. But I see this is the corn that is trying to come back. If you look, it's actually putting out suckers, but it's like nothing's happening with that. The heat got to the plants, unfortunately, as they were just putting on cobs. So, well... Uh, but also what is having, so great time of the year. Um, this is like, um, this is like the garden renaissance part of the year. Um, it's time to plant kale, uh, cause, or leafy greens in general, cause they won't, they'll be fine with the cold. Kale is probably the one of the best things you can do. Cause it's going to grow up the fastest to produce a reasonable and meaningful crop 
and I've closed to some other brassicas, which may take a little longer, like broccoli and whatnot. So here's the time for kale, 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 kale. But um, various kinds of onions do really well too. And that's what I have set up here. So you can see in, up in this pot with a, with a rhubarb, I have the Egyptian walking onions that are going on like their third generation of growing in this one season. So not even like third year, it's like third generation in a season. They're so prolific. And this is the second generation of the potato onions that I actually split up and propagated earlier in the year. They're regrowing. I'm going to be taking some of these smaller pots uh, into, you can see another one right here that's doing even better. I'm going to be taking those into the greenhouse with me this as soon as the weather starts getting colder. And um, along with probably the air layered plants, like maybe the blackberries, if I can get at least a few roots on them, probably going to put those in pots, bring them in. I originally planned to do a huge uh, hydroponic, cracky hydroponic system for kale. <coughs> Excuse me. In the greenhouse this winter. And I might still set up some experimental ones, but I'm probably not going to dedicate every conceivable space to them. So I just want to mention that. But we'll talk about that in the future as the winter comes upon us. But yeah, I can't wait to taste that kale. So excited. Um, as you can see, these are more Egyptian walking onions. These are some initial plantings when I propagated. You might remember um, it's a long time back. I really got to keep some pictures for these presentations. But these are the new uh, first year crowns for strawberries that I planted with some uh, propagated Egyptian walking onions. Boom, explosion. I've already gotten a lot of strawberries, even though I planted these later in the season. I think this is the sparkle variety. And they're the only variety that all the crowns really took off. And then maybe more to... I was desperate for strawberries. Earlier in the year, uh, Starks fooled me. I ordered some strawberries that they didn't tell me until much, much later that they they canceled my order, that part of my order. And by that time, it was impossible to reorder any uh, roots anywhere, except for taking your chances on things like Etsy and eBay and Amazon. And I actually ordered a bunch of strawberry crowns off Amazon. And I planted them, and these did amazing. They're supposedly sparkle variety. The, the, the berries were great, too. But a lot of the other crowns that I planted, along with the asparagus, the rest went in the asparagus. They didn't do well and they might have just gotten overgrown by the asparagus because again those asparagus roots asparagus roots that i planted this year have done amazing absolutely amazing they're like i said the first year they were producing finger sized i should have just eaten some honestly but it was first year so i was like leaving them alone but they were so doing so well so they were so happy they were producing harvestable sized spears um but they kind of overcrowded the, the strawberries but that's fine because First thing next year, I'm going to order another gigantic pack. Like, uh, I usually get like from Starks, though I'm a little weird about Starks these days, but I'll give them another shot. Um, ordering, because they have a nice collection and they've been done well for me in the past. So I'll actually buy like, I think they call it a strawberries all year long or all season long, where it's like three different varieties. It's some early, it's some June bearing, it's some all, um, uh, uh, what do they call it? Day neutral. Everbearing, everbearing varieties. But in any case, so this is, the, and look, they're already shooting out like little roots. So I'm probably going to steal some of these roots of all the, um, all the runners from the strawberry plants of all the different varieties that I find, snip them off and actually use them, plant them and grow them in the greenhouse so I can actually have nice big plants come thing. So there's going to be a lot of, and that's part of the reason why I'm not going to do a huge cracky setup because I'm still experimenting with kale in cracky. And it did okay, but it got that that system that I showed in, in earlier videos. That got overwhelmed with the heat. Even with my doors open in my greenhouse, the, the kale was just not having it. Kale doesn't like that that much of heat. So I kind of just gave up on, on greenhouse stuff during the heat wave, which was most of the season, I will admit. But especially towards the end, when the drought was getting really bad. Um, but in any case, so excited about that. So I'll be propagating hopefully a lot of blackberries. Because um, as I said in my previous live stream... I'm basically going to be planting blackberries everywhere because it's a berry that is very prolific in terms of both fruiting and propagation, self-propagation, um, very hardy, uh, resists wildlife, uh, uh, resists wildlife. Um, it's a berry that we really enjoy in this family. Strawberries and blackberries are number one for us. So I have all these weird berries, but I'm of the thought that I have a lot of them but I'm not going to baby them too much. Like if they don't work out long term, they don't work out. And I just, I mean, that's why I'm going to interplant and spread strawberries and blackberries kind of everywhere. 
Um, strawberries are going to go in all the, the, the hill mound gardens that I created, um, where the stumps previously were, the stump gardens, I guess you'd want to call them. And blackberries are basically going to go in all my row of berries, my huge row of berries. Uh, and the peppers continue to do amazing. They're slacking off now. I've gotten amazing harvests off these. These are the Sweet Bonnets, which is a lower heat Scotch Bonnet pepper. That's what you see here. And I did not take a picture of the Habanadas. I also grew Habanadas, but it looks just as great. Um, but also kind of, because the weather's now suddenly colder. Um, so they're kind of like, oh, we're kind of done. So unfortunately, so this is a Roselle. Um, and it's the first time I've ever successfully grown it to do this level of beauty. But it's, it requires such a long season, I'm not going to get any flower buds by the looks of it. Because any day now, we could have a frost, and that's going to go kaput. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Let me just go through, see if I missed anything. Oh, the puppy. Look at the puppy. No, that's about it. So that's really what's going on here for the fall garden. You know, focus the scale and preparing things to bring back into the greenhouse and just coming up with greenhouse plans. So maybe next live stream, I'll talk heavily about what we're going to be doing for the greenhouse and um, focus less and less off on outside stuff that's going on. Again, I am I do have the the DWC kale going in the right here in the room with me. Actually, it's behind the green screen and um, We'll probably talk more about that. It's going okay. I'm not seeing like the amazing growth I thought, but I'm wondering previously when I had really good luck growing kale indoors, it was with um, Fox Farms Grow Big, which is heavily focused towards uh, vegetative growth. And right now the kale is kind of running on a master blend, which is more for fruiting plants. I mean, you can use it for anything really, but I think it's not giving them the right nutrition. So I threw, I don't have a ton of the, the Fox Farm Grow Big left, but I threw what I had into each of the buckets, hoping it would give them a kickstart. But probably what's going to happen, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm probably going to have to drain out a lot of the water out of these, um, out of these buckets and uh, refill it with just the good old Grow Big. Uh, but in any case, we'll talk about that in a future video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm sad nobody made it into the live chat today. But hopefully you'll catch me next time. I'm going to be trying to stream uh, here on this channel uh, every Sunday in the early afternoon. I'm still aiming for about 1 o'clock start time. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. I don't know. We still got to figure out. But I may also be streaming other times because I don't know. I may just start streaming whenever I have something to talk about. We'll see how it goes. I really am trying to figure out how I can use this new setup with the green screen and the better microphone and the better camera. And... To, to provide more of like a news uh, presentation. And what I'm going to be doing in the future too is also creating and, and sketching out things that relate to specific um, topics. So starting each video, because these videos, especially if I have a lot of viewers, tend to go kind of long. So I'll save most of the chatting for the end and answering questions. But in the beginning of the video, I was thinking about having a really specific topic. So like the focus of the video would be, say, air layering. And I would actually do like a proper demonstration with with little charts and, and diagrams, because I know people have asked about those sorts of videos. And we'll talk about that and then we'll move on to more general updates and then chat. That way people, I think that will be a good way to stagger the, 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 the parts of it. Oops, sorry. So, you know, so people are coming looking for that particular topic of air layering. We'll get their information in the beginning. Once the presentation's done, I'll talk about more general stuff. And the people who want to see the more general updates can see that. And the people who want to chit chat and just hang out can stay to the end. I think that would be a really good format. But if you have better ideas, please let me know in the comments below. <laughs> and if you give this video a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. Let me know that you like this format and help me uh, build this channel. You know, I'm still, you know, this channel has grown consistently, but it's a slow growing channel. It's all good. It is what it is. I'm happy to do it no matter what. But uh, in any case, uh, thank you. Thank you for watching. And as always, thank you for joining me on this journey.